Okay, you should have read about work and how it's related to force. Work is force times distance. What we're going to do is look at a couple of examples, one with a spring and one with uh, a varying, another varying force um, in order to help illustrate the, how we do work problems. So our first example, it's going to take us a force of 50 newtons to stretch a spring 8 centimeters. We want to know how much work is required to stretch the spring from 6 centimeters to 12 centimeters. And notice that the um, force required at the different lengths will be different. Um, for 6 centimeters, it's not going to take as many newtons. And at 12 centimeters, it will be greater than the 50 newtons required to do it at 8 centimeters. Okay, that brings us to Hooke's Law, which says that the force required to stretch a spring is proportional to the distance that the spring is stretched. So, um, what does that mean? If I take 50 newtons to a stretch at 8 centimeters, and I double the force, giving us 100 newtons, that will double the distance that we stretch the spring. It would go to 16 centimeters. On the other hand, if I cut the number of uh, newtons in half, if I only use 25 newtons of force, I would only stretch it half as far, 4 centimeters. Our first goal then is to come up with an equation that represents the force at any given distance x. So our force is going to be our function f of x. To say it's proportional to the distance means it's a constant multiple of x, x as being the distance that we stretch. Our goal is to figure out what k is. Well, we have one pair of um, data, or we have one pair of numbers that will help us out. When f is 50, x is going to be 8, or, well, we have to be careful, not 8 centimeters. We need to have this in terms of meters because that's how newtons are defined. Uh, so we need to convert the 8 centimeters to 0 0.08. So 50 newtons is k times 0 0.08. Solving for k, we end up with 625, and so our equation becomes f of x is 625x. Now that's the force. That's the force that we are exerting on the spring when we are x meters away from, or when the spring has been stretched x meters. Okay, If we want to move that, well, if we only move it a little bit, the force is not constant, but it's pretty much the same value on a very small distance. And we're going to call the distance that we move dx. So the work that we will do by stretching the spring just a little bit will be our force times the distance, which is f of x times dx. Well, we want to do this from 6 centimeters to 12 centimeters. And once again, we need to convert both 6 centimeters and 12 centimeters to meters. So our work is going to be the integral from 0 0.6 or 0 0.06 to 0.12 of 625x dx. 625x is our function. So we find our integral evaluated at both endpoints, getting 0.12x squared minus 0.06x squared, all multiplied by 65 over 2 or 625 over 2 which turns out to be 3.375 joules. That's the unit of work in, uh, in the metric system. Our second example is going to involve another example um, which something varies. So what varied in the first example? The force that we had to use to stretch the spring is what varied. Okay, well here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lifting a 50-foot chain. It weighs 2 pounds per foot and we're lifting it um, from the side of a 100-foot building, or you can think of this being on the roof of a 100-foot building. The reason we have a 100-foot building is so that um, there's chain that's on the ground, or we don't have any chain that's kind of laying around on the ground. All of it's being pulled up at the same time. Once we lift it onto the roof, the portion that we've lifted off up is laid onto the ground, so it's no longer um, in consideration in terms of putting weight on the chain which means, if you think about it, that the chain is going to be getting lighter as we go. And we want to figure out the total work done in lifting the chain. Okay. So one big problem solving strategy is to set up a, a picture, we're going to draw the picture in just a second, but label where we want x equals zero to be. Now I have three very natural choices here. x equals zero could correspond to the ground, that would make sense. It could correspond to the bottom of the chain, or it could correspond to the top of the roof. We could set the problem up in all three different ways as long as we account for um, the appropriate value of x along the way. 
all three would give us the same answer. But we're going to choose it to be the top of the roof, and then x equals 50 will correspond to the bottom of the chain. So x is going to um, increase as we move down. So here's our picture. There's a little happy guy at the top of the roof. The red part is our chain. We say x equals 0 is the top. x equals 50 is the very bottom. So how do we think about this in terms of um, moving our chain and what work is done? Well, let's just take a very small segment. It's so small, just the very tip of the arrow here where the x is. Okay, so I am down at distance x. That teeny portion of the chain is going to be needed to be moved a distance of x up. So in our case, the distance is going to be x. Well, we now have the distance, we need to figure out what the force is. Well, the chain is of uniform density, which means if I look at a small portion way down here at x, and then look at the same length up here at the top, that will be the same mass, the same weight. Okay. So what I want to do is imagine just a very small piece of this, and we'll call that piece of length dx, and multiply it by 2 because it's 2 pounds per foot. So our force is 2 times dx. Again, 2 is the weight or the yeah, the weight per foot and dx is the very small distance of chain that we're dealing with. Well, we want to set up an integral which represents work and it's force times distance, so we're going to multiply 2x by or 2dx by x. We want to evaluate this from 0 to 50 because we start at x equals 0, work our way up to x equals 50, integrate 2x, we get x squared, from 50 down to 0, we're going to have a total of 200 or 2,500 foot-pounds.